All right, welcome back to the fifth video now in our series where we're covering Unreal Engine's character movement component in depth. Um, so in this video, we're going to be covering sliding. In the last video, we did crouching, so it makes sense that now we're going to be doing sliding, and sliding is also going to be our first custom movement mode. So if you're looking to know more about custom movement modes, maybe to make your own, then um, this will give you a lot of good general information on how to make a custom movement mode, how to fit that into the system of the default character movement component in your own custom movement component. And um, this will definitely just help you understand uh, the CMC a lot more. So um, before we get into it, I'm going to explain sort of how I'm going to implement sliding um, at a higher level. So if here's our character, right, in the last video, we made it so they can crouch, um, and that just um, changes the capsule height, and then they walk slowly. Um, so for sliding, uh, you could do it a lot of ways, but I'm going to make it so that when the player double taps C, so the first tap makes them crouch, if they double tap, then they go into a slide where they go into a crouched height, but then they slide along the ground and after a short duration they pop up um, and I'm also going to do it physics based so like if you slide on a slope you will continue to gain speed and until you slide all the way onto the flat part with a lot of speed and then you'll you know pop back up once you slow down so I am not doing this um, with a timer so like the time you slide or the distance you slide are not fixed. Um, it's all about velocity, it's all physics based. So when you slide, you'll get a short boost and you'll have friction as you're sliding. And then when you slow down to a certain minimum speed, you'll exit the slide. So this means, yeah, this means you could technically slide like indefinitely on a long hill. Um, and then the only other requirement other than speed for being in a slide is having a contact surface. So if you're sliding, say you enter a slide here, um, if you go off the edge, you're going to pop back up and then just fall onto the ground. Um, and there's also going to be, you're also going to increase your speed uh, proportional to the slope that you're on. So steep slope, you're going to go really fast. If you try to slide maybe up a slope, say, you're not going to make it very far at all. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to do it physics and velocity based. Not only is this easier, I think, and a lot cleaner with the code, but I think it makes for more interesting movement anyway. I think this is what most people are after is this physics-based, momentum-based sliding. So that's what we're gonna implement here. So let's get into the code. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, do a little bit of setup to um, prep the character movement component before we jump into the slide implementation. Um, so since this is our first ever movement mode, the first thing I'm going to do is add the custom movement mode enum. So this is going to be our personal enum that we use to keep track of our custom movement modes and switch between different movement modes. And you can see I put in here the first ever one, which is slide. And these are just uh, kind of boilerplate for Unreal Engine. This is just kind of how you define an Unreal Engine enum um, with their syntax. Um, but this is all we care about and um, you'll see later on we'll see what the uh, default movement mode enum looks like and I'm trying to stick to that format as close as possible. Um, next we're going to make a cached reference to our uh, zippy character. Um, this I should have probably done like last video or a couple videos ago. I do this pretty much um, I, I would always do this in a, in a character movement component, no matter what. It's uh, just a reference to the character owner. And you'll see that you know, this is sort of just the format that the character movement component wants you to do it. And this is how they do it. So I'm just going to follow them and get a nice reference to our character. And to make this work, we're going to have to set this value. So to do that, I'm going to do that in the initialize component method. So we're going to put that in here. And then for the definition, all we're going to do is just set the zippy character owner to the, the owner. 
And then we're going to want make one more helper function um, down here. This will be a public function. And this is just going to be is custom movement mode. So this is going to be a function we call to check if we're in a custom movement mode. So that's going to look like this. Also really simple. We're just checking if we're in a custom movement mode and if that custom movement mode is um, the one we're checking against. Now we can get into the implementation of our slide. And to do that, we're going to define these four functions. Uh, this is our kind of miniature slide system. Um, it's pretty straightforward. We can enter the slide, we can exit the slide. This function is in charge of the iterations, the actual slide um, mechanics, sort of. And then this is just a helper function to um, assist these functions. It just gets the surface that we're currently sliding on. So uh, these three functions here are our own functions. I, I just um, use these to sort of assist the slide mechanic. This function, the fizz function, if you um, watched my architecture video, then you'll know about fizz functions. I recommend you should check that out to make sure you kind of understand what I'm doing here. But this fizz function is the actual part of the system that is required for every movement mode. So every movement mode needs a physics uh, function to define how that movement mode behaves. And for us, that's going to be typically it's fizz and then the name of your movement mode. So fizz slide. Um, and then it always has to take in this delta time and these iterations. So we're actually going to start implementing these from the bottom up, uh, unintuitively as that may sound. So get slide surface. It's going to be it's a pretty simple function. Uh, it's basically just a wrapper for a line trace. So we're going to just define, we're going to start the line trace at the component's location, kind of the center of the component. Then we're going to end at um, two times the half height down. Um, so that's the, this is the line we're creating. Um, and then we're just going to do that line trace and just return the result because this already returns a Boolean anyway. Um, also, you might have noticed um, this guy. I think I did this off camera uh, between this episode and last, but um, this is a function I'm calling on the zippy character owner that I made. I like to make this for every character I make. Um, it's just a nice little helper function called get ignore character params. So anytime I'm doing like a geometry collision test, I can call this helper function that will um, just create a collision query params variable that automatically ignores um, the character and all its children. So if you don't, if you don't know about like collision checking and you don't know about the query params and ignoring actors, don't worry about this. But you you should have this. This just makes sure that um, the line trace doesn't hit the character because you can't slide on yourself. You know you want to ignore the character when you're performing the line trace. So um, before I implement fizz slide, I'm going to define a couple parameters that will characterize um, how our slide works. So uh, these four parameters are pretty self explanatory. Um, the slide min speed just says what is the minimum speed required to slide. So if you're if you're below that speed, you can't slide. You can't maintain slide. Um, what is the this enter impulse? This is a b boost in velocity that you get uh, as soon as you enter a slide. The gravity force is the amount of force applied to keep the player against the ground, and this also affects how fast um, a slope will change your velocity when you're sliding down a slope. And then the slide friction affects um, how slow or how fast you lose the velocity as you slide on a surface. So now let's implement this function, which again, like this is the meat of the slide mechanic. This is where all the movement uh, takes place.
so it's kind of a lot, um, uh, and there's unfortunately a decent amount of boilerplate here, but I'm going to go over it. Hopefully this should all make sense, and um, you should also hopefully be able to learn um, kind of how a movement mode is supposed to work so that you can like take this and make new movement modes um, other than just sliding. So first thing, some boilerplate here. We're just making sure that the delta time we're given is not less than the min tick time. This is, I mean, a lot of this code I'm going to show you is like code that I've observed from the default character movement component. Like I wouldn't necessarily have just thought to put this. I didn't know they had a min tick time. But like when I look at all their code, I understand kind of what they're doing. I recognize, okay, they, they don't want you to be performing any physics if you don't have a delta time greater than the min tick time. So like you could you you know you can go and read all the um, source code and find this stuff. I've kind of combed through and tried to understand, see what's reasonable, what I what I should put, and um, what's specific to their implementations. Um, so that's like that's these lines is they're I would I guess consider them boilerplate. Um, restore pre-additive root motion. Uh, this is interesting. So if you don't even know what root motion is. Um, you, know, you can ignore this, but root motion is essentially when an animation controls the character's position and or velocity. Um, now, technically, okay, so like in a slide, I probably would never want root motion to like take place because the slide is kind of a very specific movement. So I probably would not include this line um, if I was like making a slide for my game. I wanted to show it here for completeness because if you were to want to use root motion in a movement mode, you should probably use this line to make sure this all works correctly. Um, so this next chunk here, uh, this is our own logic. So we are checking to make sure that we have a valid um, sl slide, if, we, if our slide state is valid. So um, first we're checking if uh, this get slide surface fails. So if we can't get a slide surface, if there's nothing to slide on, we should be getting out of the slide. And also, if we are traveling under the slide speed, the minimum slide speed, we should also get out of the slide. So if either of these are true, we're going to exit the slide, which we haven't defined yet, but we will in a second. And then we're going to start new physics. Um, Again, if you haven't watched my architecture video, I highly recommend doing that because I go over kind of how the phys functions work, how the physics um, is set up in the character movement component. But this is kind of saying, all right, um, start a new iteration in this same exact frame, but with a new um, physics in a new physics uh, function because we're no longer sliding because we just exited the slide. And then it's returning because Obviously, this context from here on down doesn't make any more sense um, since we're no longer sliding. If this is not the case, then we can proceed with doing more sliding stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is apply surface gravity um, to our velocity, which is just going to be um, straight up a downward uh, force, adding it to our velocity directly. We're not going. There's no like. I guess you could use like add force function, but we, now that we're in a safe movement uh, function, we're going to do it directly because we want it to apply right here, like right um, immediately, basically, whereas add force can kind of waits and puts that off. So this line's pretty simple. Um, this is this line also is essentially saying like V plus equals uh, A times DT, right? Like it's 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 a basic physics function. Um, then we are handling strafe. So strafe, um, I'm allowing the character to strafe in the slide so they can only go left and right, um, kind of steer the slide, if you will. So the way I'm doing this is um, basically what this code is going to say, I'm just going to kind of summarize it, is that um, we're only going to allow the acceleration to be uh, like A or D, basically only left or right, only horizontal acceleration, no forward or backward, up or down. Um, and then all we're doing, all this this uh, clamp and dot products is saying is we're thresholding that. So, you know, if you, because this is because like if you press W, technically you could have a small component of horizontal 
uh, acceleration, but we want to uh, only do it if there's a large enough uh, acceleration. Uh, also, if you're not familiar, um, acceleration is basically the input vector. It's a little bit modified, but you can think of it basically as the world vector of your WASD um, input. But then here we're going to modify it. So we're going to clamp it to the right vector, which is basically saying only allow it to be left and right, or we're just going to set it to zero if it's not above a certain threshold. Uh, next, uh, a little bit more boilerplate, I would say. Um, so if we don't have any anim root motion and there's not a, a root motion override, which again, uh, don't worry about that. We don't have root motion. If you don't know what that means, just ignore it. Um, and if that's the case, which it pretty much always is because there's no root motion, we're going to call this function calc velocity. Now, this isn't really boilerplate. This is more of a helper function, I would say. So there's a lot of functions um, in the default character movement component that kind of just, you can call them in your fizz functions, and they're just helper functions that perform common tasks. So this one is applying our acceleration to our velocity as well as some other things like friction and braking. We don't really care about braking here, but um, it's just a helpful velocity update function, sort of. So we're gonna call this, we're gonna pass in our slide friction. Um, oh, whoops, we're, we're not in a fluid, that should be false. Um, yeah, we're just in air, <laughs> I don't know why I put that. Uh, actually, no, I was, I was wrong about the fluid, it should be true. Uh, the reason why it should be true is because Friction doesn't apply unless uh, you're technically in a fluid. Uh, don't ask me why, but we're just going to leave that as true. I believe that's also what the walk, the fizz walk does anyway, because they, they also want the friction. So we need friction, we're in a fluid. And then we're going to apply root motion to velocity. Um, same deal with the root motion. Like You don't need this line if you're not going to have root motion. This is just for completeness. All right, now after all of that, we can finally get to performing the move. So um, now that we've like passed all the thresholds of checking, like, is this move going to happen or not? Now that we can guarantee, okay, the move's going to happen, we're going to say iterations plus plus. So this is just a variable that keeps track of every time we perform a move in a single frame. Um, we're going to flip B just teleported. This is also a little bit of... Um, just like a boilerplate line that you have to put um, in every perf uh, physics function. Um, now, for our implementation, we're going to define all these variables to help us. These are all going to help us in this line. This line, safe move uptake component. <laughs> this is the sole line where everything happens. This is the movement line. So this function is what you want to call to actually move the character. Um, it's it's kind of annoying how like I would say kind of buried this line is like when I was originally kind of trying to understand the character movement component this was not sort of obvious like obviously the name is obvious but like you can't just change you can't just directly change the um, capsules position or anything like that like you have to call this line so um, to build up to that so uh, we have this adjusted position so the way it works is the first value is a delta position the second value is an absolute rotation so it's kind of annoying you do a delta position but just the new rotation and then sweep here sweep is saying that we are going to um like sort of uh sphere cast or capsule cast the capsule from the current position to the target position instead of just directly teleporting it that way, if we were to hit something along the way, so say that our adjusted is trying to move us into a wall, then sweep will prevent it. It'll move it right up to the wall, but not through it. Um, so we definitely want that on. And then this uh, hit reference is going to be the hit result for if we do hit something in the sweep. Um, so adjusted is just going to be a velocity times delta time. And you can think of this as like, um, x is equal to v times dt right um, just like a basic kind of kinematics um, for the rotation here this is a little bit more tricky but basically we want to 
conform the capsule's rotation to the surface that it's on. So we're making a rotation, we're using this um, super handy uh, function in the F rotation matrix uh, struct called make from XZ. And then the X axis is gonna be a vector, it's gonna be the velocity vector projected onto the surface plane. And then the Z axis is gonna be the surface plane normal. Um, don't worry too much if this doesn't make sense. This is just kind of some like rotational and vector math. Um, that's just going to be the new rotation. And yeah, this line is what actually executes it. So then everything after this is kind of just the aftermath or the cleanup of this. So um, here we're going to check, did we hit something along the way in this update? And if that's the case, we're going to handle the impact. Um, also kind of a boilerplate, you always want to call this line to handle any impacts in your safe movement update. And then we are also going to call this function slide along surface. This is super useful. This is another sort of helper function similar to calc velocity. So this function will, so the when you safe update, um, when you safe move update, you'll move until you hit something, but you'll just kind of stop dead in your tracks as soon as you hit it. What slide along surface does is it takes that hit and it takes your velocity and it keeps you going um, parallel to that like wall you hit that way like if you hit a wall at an angle you don't just immediately stop you keep sliding but with like less velocity kind of along the wall and this is also true of the floor this is true of anything you hit so it's just a way to slide along a surface and obviously we're implementing sliding so it's really useful that like you can just call this function um, from any physics function and it's completely movement safe and it um, just works so um, lastly, here we're going to again check if the slide conditions are met. So we're going to check, you know, is there an invalid slide surface or is there not enough speed? And if either of those are true, we're going to exit the slide. And then after that, we're just going to update the outgoing velocity. And so all we're doing here is saying velocity is the new location minus the old location divided by dt. And again, you can recognize this as just, um, v equals dx over dt, basic kinematics. Um, you might think like this looks a lot like what we did here. You know, this is just kind of the inverse of this because um, basically this is adjusted. So shouldn't velocity be identical? Like um, if you like work out the math, velocity should end up being the same thing in both these equations if you just divide over delta time, right? Not the case because if we did hit something during the sweep, then this delta position will be less than what our adjusted was. And so this line's really important because say you're sliding and you hit a wall, you want to cancel your velocity when you hit that wall, you wanna stop. Um, so this line is saying like, if you didn't move anywhere, then your velocity should reflect that. Um, so that's what this is doing. And yeah, that's the entire physics function. So yeah, it's a lot, but hopefully now you can go through and look at each part and sort of recognize uh, what each part is doing, at least at a, at a higher level and recognize how it all comes together. And just at least know that this is the line where movement is taking place. The two places where movement is taking place is this line and this line. This is the only two places that the uh, component is actually moving. All right, so let's go back and implement these two functions now. Um, basically, when we enter a slide, we're going to set wants to crouch to true. The reason why we're doing this is because the slide state is still going to be a crouching we're still going to be in crouch. So crouching is kind of weird. Crouching is not a separate movement mode, at least the way that Unreal Engine defines it. Crouching is just like its own sort of um, Boolean. You, you can be in any movement mode and be crouching. Obviously, it's only really valid for um, like walking by default. We're going to make it valid for sliding because 
crouching as it's defined is basically just changing the height of the capsule. So we want to kind of piggyback off the crouch mechanic because we do want the capsule to be shortened while we're sliding. So technically while you're sliding, you're also crouching. Um, but it's the movement of that is going to be different because we have defined a different physics function. We're not using phys walking, which is the movement mode for just like default walking. Um, we're also gonna have this line. This line is applying that enter impulse. So um, it's just gonna get the horizontal component of velocity um, or sorry, just, just non-vertical. So just remove the Z component and then times uh, our enter impulse. And then we're gonna set the movement mode to be um, move custom, C move slide. So you can see now how I wanted to make it, uh, how I wanted to follow the naming convention. So how this function works is first we're passing in the movement mode, not the custom movement mode, the movement mode. So this is a predefined Unreal Engine enum. You can see all the, whoops, you can see all the movement modes here. Um, from none walking, nav walking, falling, swimming, flying, and then custom. Custom is the catch-all. So like it says, it includes many possible sub modes. Ours, only the only one we have right now is sliding. Um, and then we can pass in um, our custom movement mode here. And this is just being taken as a uint, but you know, for us, that's gonna be an enum that is gonna control which custom mode we're in. So this sets the movement mode. Um, for exit, it's kind of similar in reverse. Um, set wants to crouch to false. Um, these three lines are going to correct the rotation because if you remember, we wanted to change the rotation of the capsule to conform to the plane that we're sliding on. But as soon as we exit the slide, we wanna make the capsule vertical again. So that's what uh, these lines are doing here. And then we're setting the movement mode to walking. The reason I can call this function safe movement update component is because exit slide is a safe movement method. I'm only gonna call this in a safe movement context and I need to be aware of that. Now I could prefix this with safe to make it extra clear. I don't typically prefix functions, only um, variables, um, mostly just because there's so many default functions that are not prefixed, just like fizz functions um, and you know on movement change, etc. So uh, I'm just gonna remember that this is a safe function. And if you don't know what I mean by that, like safe, not safe, um, I would really recommend looking at the architecture video I covered, the architecture of the character movement component, because you really have to understand what's going on behind the scenes, like under the hood, for all this to sort of make sense, because otherwise it would seem like we're doing a lot more work for nothing than what we actually need to do. Um, but anyway, now that we have these defined, we are going to make the bridge between our current character movement component and the slide mechanic because you know we have this island of the slide implementation it is not currently connected to the system we're going to connect it all right so the first thing we're going to do is define a new save move variable actually our first save move variable that's not a flag so this is a this is a save move flag, and this is going to be put into the compressed flags. This is not going to be a flag. This is not going to be um, replicated at all, but it's important to the state of the movement logic. It's important to what gets executed, so we do want it to be saved. And that is going to be prev wants to crouch, or just the previous value of wants to crouch. And... Yeah, basically we're just storing the previous value of a flag, so not a not a big jump, but we're just storing the previous value. The reason we're doing that is because we want to get this edge detection where we detect if the flag if the wants to uh, crouch was previously false and is now true or vice versa. We can detect like when it's flipped. Um, the reason so like we want to detect when it's flipped, right? But you might just think like we have this function crouch pressed, 
this is the event that is flipping the flag here um it's flipping the flag like this is the event can't we just like execute our code right here like why would we make a new variable to detect this event when we have the function call here the reason is because um this gets called on the client when the client presses the c key it does not get called on the server and it does not get called on any um simulated proxies that are simulating this um, character so we need to store this um, previous value to kind of recreate that crouch event um, so that we can um, capture it on all clients and the server and if you're familiar with safe saved um, kind of architecture then you'll know for every saved variable we need a safe variable in the character this is not in the character move component this is in the saved move um, to make that clear we need whoops this variable um, prev wants to sprint with the safe prefix this is the working variable we're going to use this variable in our logic um, in our actual character movement component logic it's going to be stored in this saved variable so that if we want to replay a move at a later time we need to recreate the state that re that was able to produce that move so we need to save this variable because it's important to the state of how this move will be performed so um, to make this saved variable sort of synced up we're gonna have to add it to our set and prep functions so here we're gonna add this line kind of just following the general syntax we're just storing the saved value from the character's safe value and the opposite right here we are putting the saved value back into the character's safe value so setting and prepping the moves if you um, aren't familiar with what this is doing and you do want to know because it is definitely important to how the character movement component operates check out my introduction video where I set up the character movement component and implement sprinting that kind of goes over this whole uh, saved move implementation also we need to add this line to the on movement updated method um, this is what actually sets the previous value wants to crouch to the current value um, so here's where we do that on movement updated because that's after all the movement has been updated so we can safely set this and like expect it to be valid in the next frame next we are going to implement a function on the character movement component called update character state before move now this is going to be where we uh, do the edge detection and where we can enter the slide movement mode. Um, the reason why we're doing it in this function, as opposed to like normally I would put something like this in on movement updated, is, and this took me some digging around, but this is where the uh, crouch mechanic is being handled. So I have to update it in this function to update before the crouch mechanic gets to update because I'm doing a little bit of sort of trickery with the variables which i'll show you in a second but i need to um, perform my slide update before the crouch can update um, so let's implement this so what we're doing here is we have two cases entering and exiting so if we're in the walking movement mode and wants to crouch is off and previously we were crouching then this is the case to enter a slide so again so we're double tapping c to slide right so the first time we tap c we're going to enter crouch state the second time b wants to crouch is going to be false but that's when we check if we can enter a slide or not so we actually are technically entering a slide and exiting a crouch um, but then we're going to flip this back to be true. So that's kind of the catch here as we want to um, monitor this variable to tell when the player presses C the second time, but then we're going to flip it back to true 
so that they stay in the crouching state, so that that capsule is um, still short. Um, so if this is the case, then we've pressed C the second time, and we're going to check if it's possible to slide. So we're going to say um, if the velocity is greater than the min speed, and if the slide surface is valid, and if those are true, then we're going to enter the slide. And again, remember from that um, function, we immediately flip the wants to crouch back to true. And that's why we do that, so that you know it was set to false because that was the second press. We set it to true um, before the crouch um, me mechanism can raise the capsule height back to its original height. Um, otherwise, this we have another case where this is if the player presses C while sliding and they want to exit the slide now. So if they're in sliding, this is why we set up this function. Um, if their custom movement mode is slide and they the C key has not been pressed, so want or it's been pressed again, like it's a toggle, right? So it's been toggled to off, then we're gonna exit the slide. Um, and we're doing all this because we want to catch it before the super function because here, if I go in here, you can see this is where the crouching mechanic is implemented. It's kind of a weird function, but this is where they do it. And um, yeah, it's, this is the only thing they do pretty much in here is just the crouching. And um, we just wanna change this variable before this function gets a chance to um, uncrouch or crouch. So um, that's the update character state before movement. So now um, we have a way to indicate that we want to enter and exit a slide. So these two are checked off, but we don't have a link to the physics function itself. There's no um, reference to this yet, so we have to create that. And we're going to implement this function, um, phys custom. Whoops. And phys custom is going to be the function that handles the custom movement mode. It handles all the physics for the custom movement mode. And so we're going to implement this the first time because we've never had a custom movement mode before. But when you make more custom movement modes, you'll just be modifying this function. So the implementation is pretty small for now. Um, basically, we are just having, making this little switch statement and our only movement mode is slide, so it's we don't even need a switch statement, but like ideally, when you have multiple custom movement modes, these are gonna be separate cases, and all you're gonna be doing is calling the physics function um, for that, uh, like for the according uh, movement mode and then I just have this case here where um, if none of this so if the super didn't catch your movement mode and none of your switch cases caught the current movement mode then we're just gonna have a fatal error um, you know you might think like why would you want to create a fatal error here but this is honestly so much better than like silently handling this I used to like try to always like account for every edge case like and handle every error uh, with like if cases and stuff but like I got to the point where I realized like you don't want to handle an error that you don't ever expect to happen so there would never be a valid time where this would fail and get to here so I want to make sure that this fails very loudly like with a big fatal error um, so that I know right away because like if you just try to handle this like you had some separate case um, where it did something else, um, maybe weird, like maybe it tried to put it back into a, a, a movement mode that you just kind of selected at random, then you, you know, you could break things and you wouldn't easily be able to tell how they broke. And funny enough, when I was actually implementing slide, this actually did fire. I messed up something with my custom movement mode and right away I knew not only where the air was, what the air was, but like... I was able to fix it pretty quickly. So I recommend doing stuff like this a lot. Also, I just wanted to show you what start new physics looks like. So this is the main like sort of parent physics function. Um, and you can see it does a little bit of work, but then it has this big switch statement 
on all the movement modes and it just calls all the according physics functions. So, um, yeah, sort of the same thing we're trying to do here. And look at that, they just throw a warning. So, I mean, I guess they have to, that's more professional, but for us, we wanna debug fast, solve problems fast. So we're not gonna do that. Um, so moving on, we are pretty much done with the entire implementation. You know, we've linked up the entire mechanic, we've implemented it. It's almost good to go. So there's two more functions we need to implement. Um, those are is moving on ground and can crouch in current state. And these just help to define the crouching and moving behavior for our new movement mode sliding. So these are both really simple. All right, so for is moving on ground, all we're doing is returning the super or is sliding. The reason we're doing this is because sliding is also valid for moving on ground, but of course the super has no way of knowing um, that sliding, because it's a custom movement mode, so it just thinks if you're walking or nav walking, then you're on the ground. We also wanna say, oh, if you're sliding, you're also moving on the ground. Um, that helps with the crouching mechanic so that the crouch can work because the crouch has to be on the ground. Um, also, can crouch in current state, um, we're returning super can crouch in current state and is moving on ground. The reason I'm doing this is because I, this is preference. I don't want the player to be able to crouch in the air um, because if they crouch in the air, then a couple of things. One, like I just don't think it makes sense. Um, it could be in your game if it's more like um, cartoony maybe, but crouching is mostly on the ground thing. But two, and maybe this is the more motivating factor, I'll leave you to decide, but you actually have to end up doing more work because you have to lerp the position of the um, character mesh in the capsule because of how the capsule teleportation works. That or you have to rewrite um, the crouch mechanic from scratch. You have to just like do your own version. So yeah, I don't want to do that. And I'm going to use uh, the previous excuse to not implement crouching in midair. Um, maybe I'll come back to it in a later video. Probably, probably not. So, so now that that's all done, we have pretty much, yeah, fully implemented uh, sliding. So let's hop into the editor and check this all out. Quick note here. Um, I pasted these functions into the protected section of the class. These are supposed to be, um, public functions. All right, so here we are in the editor now, and uh, off camera, I just whipped up a couple animations for the different movement states so that we can visualize easier like what the character is actually doing when they're sliding. Otherwise, it just kind of looks like a weird walk. Um, very crude animations, nothing final, just to give you an idea of what it would look like when you go ahead and implement like a proper slide animation. I'm not just gonna touch animations at all in this tutorial because this is purely movement, um, but maybe later I would cover something like that because you know it's it's it is equally important to you know accurately represent the movement in the animation, but just a different skill set altogether. So anyway, here we are. Um, we can crouch. This is my crouch animation, mostly just a pose basically. Um, walk around, sprint from last video, and then when we're sprinting, if we double tap C. We go into a slide and you can see it like last this short duration it's all velocity based so if I had more speed I would slide for longer and if I'm just walking slow if I just double tap C I'm just gonna um, pee bag um, and if I'm crouching and I hit C again I can't enter into a slide it's only when I have enough speed I can get that little slide and then I can also I added a couple obstacles here so if I come up to one of these slopes, you can see as I slide down it, I pick up speed and then I get launched off the end. Uh, another thing you can see, I'll come over to this slope over here. Um, you can see two, one, how the capsule conforms. So you can see how the capsule will conform to the rotation we're on. And you can also see 
um, the strafing and like the switching of the angles. So yeah, it's, it's pretty fully fledged slide. Um, also, because the capsule height is changing, you can have cool things like you can slide under a obstacle. And if you're still under it, you can be crouched, but as soon as you get out, you crouch out. So yeah, you can definitely do a lot with this slide mechanic. I'd say it's pretty versatile. It's probably covering most things you need in a slide. Um, you can't obviously crouch in midair, but you can still like want to crouch. So if you see like I'm, I'm gonna jump off this ledge, I'm gonna hit C in the air, and I want to crouch, and as soon as I get down, I kind of land in this crouch. So you could still do something like a like a B hop, I guess, where you just like tap the second tap of C right away. Um, but I also don't have like jumping out of a crouch. So you, when you when you're sliding, you can't jump out. Um, you could implement that; it wouldn't be that hard. But it just figured it wouldn't be good for the scope of this video. And also, of course, uh, in the nature of this tutorial series. Um, all of this that we just wrote and the point of doing it through this um, paradigm and through this like through the Unreal Engine's character movement component is that it's all completely uh, network compatible so if I go two players um, set up like this this is the server this is the client so as you can see on the server um, it's, my VRAM is dying right now but uh, obviously characters in sync they can spin around as from last time and then if I double tap C whoops go on camera you can see the client can view me sliding so that's working out okay and now if I look at the client from the server you can see that the server can see the client sliding the client has no hiccups whatsoever working beautifully so um, that's all good now let's put some packet emulation so let's emulate um, packet lag of say 200 so it's a ping of 200 so you can see as I move on the client there is a 200 millisecond delay pretty bad that's pretty that's pretty up there I mean this is just beautiful right 200 ping and no movement starts whatsoever so it's awesome we can even try let's raise it to like 500 it's probably the, the limit um, at some point the character movement component just won't work um, you can see yeah I think it's about a thousand ping the character movement component kind of just breaks down but you can see this is pretty bad latency and yeah I can still slide around and it's pretty buttery smooth so that's awesome. So yeah, that's sliding. Um, I hope you got a lot of this video. I'm at least if you don't intend to make sliding in your game, maybe at least you can um, like learn from these movement modes and make your own sort of custom movement mode based off what you learned. Because like I'd say, a lot of the stuff we covered is pretty general and will apply to um, any movement mode you want to make. Um, yeah, the GitHub for all this, this is all going to be committed to GitHub. Uh, link is uh, in the description for the repo. So check that out if you want to, um, like, really just see all the code on your own time, look through it. <laughs> Maybe you can copy and paste a little bit. But I would still highly recommend actually learning, like, what I'm doing here because, you know, the movement stuff is very complex. And if you have any problems, um, you're going to need to understand it. Otherwise, you're going to be in deep with someone else's code. You're not going to know what's going on. And you're like the chances you're going to solve are, are unlikely. And the chances that you can just like post on a on an internet forum about this stuff are, is also kind of unlikely because like from what I've found, just like debugging and doing my own stuff when I was learning how the character movement component worked, there's just like not as much support as you would like. So, um, yeah, I do recommend learning how this stuff works. So, yeah, thanks for sticking to the end of the video, and hope to see you in the next video. We're going to cover probably a new movement mode, new mechanics, maybe something like hand gliding or who knows. So, see you in the next video.